Let's take a look at this example. Again, we are going to draw the voltage sources first. Okay, this is going to be my VCC. Okay, this is my positive terminal. This is negative terminal. And this is going to be my VEE. Okay, so this is positive terminal. This is negative. So this is VEE. Okay, and this is my VCC. And this is my ground. Okay, so current is going to flow from the uh, VEE to the ground. From the ground will go to the each base and will flow through the emitter together with IC. And anytime current is entering the component, we're supposed to label it by positive sign. Anytime it's leaving, we're supposed to label it by negative sign, right? So in order to find I tail, IC1, IC2, and the following voltages, we're supposed to find the current which goes through this resistor. In order to find the current which goes through the resistor, we're supposed to find voltage at this point. Voltage at this point is nothing else, just the voltage at these two emitters, right? That's why I'm supposed to write that my VE is equal to VE1. Let me remind you that the voltage across um, the emitter and ground and this emitter and ground is the same. Okay, so I'm going to write VE2 is equal to nothing else, just negative VBE. Okay, if you are going to use KVL, you are going to see simply that this is negative VBE. Okay, this is the voltage between emitter and ground. It's equal negative 0.7 volts. Okay, so I found the voltage at this point, and if I want to find the voltage across resistor R3, VR3, this is also called VRE, is nothing else as the difference of these two voltages. So I have VE minus VE. Okay, so this is negative 0.7 volts minus negative 12 volts. So VR3. Okay, I can say VRE also is equal to 11. 0.3 volts. I have voltage across resistor R3. I have resistance of resistor R3, so I can find IR3, where IR3 is also equal to IRE, because sometimes this resistor is called RE. And this is nothing else, just the voltage across resistor R3 divided by the resistance of resistor R3, where VR3 is equal 11.3 volts divided by R3, which is equal to 20 kilo ohms. This is equal, use the calculator, so we have 11.3 divided by 220 exponent 3. This is equal 51.36 microamps. Okay, so this is the current which will go through resistor R3. Next, you're supposed to keep in mind that the current which go, which will go to emitter of transistor Q1, okay, will be equal to the current which will go through the transistor, okay, Q2. So if I E2, I supposed to say, uh, which is going to go out from the emitter of transistor Q2. So I simply write that I E1 is equal to I E2. This is equal half of my current which goes through the resistor R3. I R3 divided by 2. This is equal 51.36 microamps divided by 2. So I have 51, 51.36 exponent 6 negative divided by 2. This is equal 
68 microamps. Okay, so this is the current which will go through each emitter. Next, I'm supposed to find IC1, and you're supposed to keep in mind that the base current is very small comparing with the IC and IE. That's why we assume that IC1 is equal to IE1, and this is equal 25.68 microamps, and IC2 is approximately equal to I. E2, and this is also equal 25.68 microamps. In other words, we say in general that IC is approximately equal to IE. Okay, so we've found we've found the tail current because IR3 is called the tail current just remind you this is it also okay so ir3 is equal it ic1 we found and we found ic2 next we're supposed to find vc1 and vc2 okay so vc1 voltage at collector of transistor q1 is going to be equal to VCC. Why? Because VCC is connected directly to the collector of transistor Q1. That's why I'm going to write that. VC1 is equal VCC and this is equal 12 volts. Next, I'm supposed to find VC2. Okay, VC2 is the voltage between this point and ground. So, I'm supposed to use the formula which says Vc2 is equal Vcc minus voltage across this resistor. That's why I'm going to write Vc2 is equal Vcc minus Ic times Rc. But in this case, this is going to be my Ic2 and Rc2. Okay, so I have Vcc equals 12 volts minus IC2 25.68 microamps times RC. In our case, RC is equal 150 kilo ohms. That's why I'm going to write 150 kilo ohms. So, VC2 is equal 12 minus 25.68 exponent 6 negative times 150 exponent 3. This is equal 8.14 volts. 8.14 volts. Okay, so we can say that the problem is solved.